Welcome to Finished Work International Ministries, a ministry that is on the cutting edge, changing lives around the world. As you let God in today and apply the word, expect a divine encounter and supernatural transformation. It is impossible for you to be defeated when you have the revelation of the will of God. It is impossible for situations to subdue you when you walk in understanding of what God is saying to you. Let the finished work of Jesus determine what you pray. When God is your source, you don't look back. You keep looking forward. You keep trusting. God, I trust you. Here's Apostle Faith Man Obuena. Glory be to God, hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made, or oh, rejoice and be glad. You're welcome to this live transmission broadcast, and today I'll be sharing how to defeat your worries. God has not called us to live a life of worry and fear and anxiety, He has called us to live a life of victory. And this life of victory is connected to the revelation of the finished work of Jesus. God is not expecting me to lose my focus on Him. He's expecting me to trust in His Word. Worry and fear are the enemies of your faith walk. Worry and fear keeps you away from reaching your full potential. And sometimes we we'll begin to worry because of our inability to trust in the ability of God. We we'll begin to worry because we can't see what God is about to do. And this is the reason why we need to listen to God's word. We need to hear the word of God like the scripture said in Romans 10, 17. He said, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If I'm hearing God's word consistently, it will help me to rise above worry, depression, anxiety. For you to defeat your worries, your fear and anxiety, you have to begin to enjoy fellowshipping with God's word. What will that do for you? When you begin to listen to the word of God, the word of God will produce hope in you. The reason why people worry most of the time is that they don't see the hope. They don't see the possibility. They don't see how it's going to turn out in their favor. So now they begin to worry. From worry, they begin to complain. They begin to nag. They are now frustrated. So, so God doesn't want us to live a life of worry. He wants us to live a life of faith. It doesn't matter the bills that are before you or the projects that are before you or the debts you're struggling with right now. If you choose to trust God, you will break free from this situation. You know, a lot of people could just look at their life and say, this thing is not working. I'm not getting the results. I'm not getting the kind of miracle that God wants me to have. I'm not seeing the kind of open door. When you worry, you are walking away from God. Worry takes you away from God. What do I mean by that? Is that when people worry, it becomes difficult for them to see what God can do for them and how God can help them come out of their situation. So worry is a satanic distraction. To keep you away from bearing the kind of fruits that God wants you to experience. So worry leads to frustration. It leads to depression. Sometimes worry can lead to bitterness. People becoming bitter and feeling frustrated because of the things they are going through. God is not expecting me to live a life of worry. He's expecting me to live a life of faith. He's not expecting me to live a life of worry, but God is expecting me to live a life of faith. That was why the scripture said, casting all your cares upon him. That what, what we're expected to do is to cast these cares upon God, not, not to worry about the cares, because worry would distract you from trusting in what God has already done. Worry would distract you from trusting in what God has already done. It makes you see a wrong picture it makes you see a uh, wrong things, you know. This is not working out. That is not working out. In the course of worry, a, a lot of people lose their mind. They become frustrated. They they become depressed. They become uh, they lose their joy. They lose their hope of living because of worry. So we can decide not to worry. 
you can make the decision right now and say, from this day forward, I'm not going to worry about anything. I'm going to trust God for everything. I am not going to worry about anything because as you begin to worry about it, your faith will begin to have problem. This is a lot of people begin to lose control in their faith work because the worry overtook them. They were so frustrated. They were saying, this thing is not working out. I don't know where I'm going to get the finances. I don't know where I'm going to get the money. And, and they begin to talk that way. They begin to speak that way. And you know what happened? The enemy takes advantage of those wrong words they are saying and then cause them to come into a place of more pain, more depression, more frustration because they decide to worry. When you open the door for worry, you will see more frustration. This is why you need to get yourself involved in hearing the word of God. In Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, it said, Let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. The mind of Christ is the mind of victory. The mind of Christ is the mind of victory. So if you begin to have the mind of Christ by reading God's word, by developing it, it will be impossible for you to worry. Why? Because you have a revelation of the goodness of God. You have a revelation of the ability of God. You have a revelation of what God can do. So you, you can't walk away from God or give up on his word because you have allowed his word to influence your way of thinking. So worry is a satanic manipulation. One of the ways Satan manipulates people is to begin to give them reasons why they should worry. Worry about your bills, worry about your marriage, worry about your children, worry about this. He's telling them, oh, worry about this. Why? You know, he comes with that pressure. It is that pressure that begins to make people to worry because they are not guiding their heart with all diligence. You know, if you can guide your heart, if you can train your mind with God's word, you can rise above uh, above worry if you can train your mind. You know, because this enemy wants to keep talking to you. He wants to keep telling you, hey, you're, you're going to die. Oh, you're going to lose your job. Hey, you're going to lose your marriage. Oh, you're going to lose your car. You're going to lose your house. Now, he, he, you're going to die. You know, he, he, he's saying those things because he wants you to start worrying about them. This is why the Bible said, casting down every imagination. So when worry comes, you need to understand that worry is not of God. It doesn't matter what is going on right now. Don't worry. Don't panic. Trust God. It doesn't matter what is going on right now. Don't worry. Don't panic. Trust God. It doesn't matter what is going on right now. You, you don't, don't wake up with worry. Don't wake up with this mentality and say, well, I don't think this is going to work out. Worry will move you away from the will of God. And worry is a sign that your hope in God has been threatened. Worry is a sign that someone's hope in God has been threatened, that their hope is is going through some challenges. They, 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 they are no longer established the way they were established, so they start worrying. Now, I want to say this to you because a lot of people are losing out today, are becoming defeated, frustrated because they are in the place of worry. God wants you to be in the place of faith, not in the place of worry. And for you to be in the place of faith, you have to stay with his word. You have to meditate on his word and make his word the foundation for your thinking. Now, I want to show you a scripture. In Matthew Gospel chapter 6, verse 33, he said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God. This is how to overcome worry. When the kingdom becomes your focus, when the things of the spirit becomes your priority, it helps you to stay out of worry and anxiety. When the things of the spirit becomes your priority, instead of me being depressed, instead of me being frustrated, I was not, I trust you. I'm going to be effective in your kingdom. I'm going to go out there, minister to people, reach out to people, pray with people, go believe God for God to heal people, to deliver them, to make a way for them. You know, when you become kingdom of God minded, when you become kingdom of God minded by Proving it by being active in kingdom service, what is going to happen is that you will no longer have room for worry. 
Because right now you're putting the kingdom first. And look at what Jesus said. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. So, so these things will be added unto you when the kingdom becomes your priority. Sometimes why we worry is that we're not seeing the things. The major reason for worry, the 89% reason why people worry is lack of finance where to live, how to pay off their mortgage, how to pay off their car note, how to be able to train their children in school. Most times, 85% of all the worry is financial worry. And this financial worry, God's word have told us what to do. This is why you need to put God first in your finances. You need to put God first in your finances. If he doesn't come first in your finances, you will not be able to Receive the kind of provision you need to build your vision, to pursue your vision, to do what God has called you to do. So you have to put God first in your finances by giving your tithes, by giving your offering, by connecting with a ministry you can partner with. That way you are moving the kingdom forward and there is a reward for putting God first. There is a reward for putting his word first. There is a reward for saying, God, you are my source. I put you first in my finances. As I receive my paycheck, I'm going to tie it out of it. I'm going to give offering out of it. I'm going to partner with the ministry. I'm going to get involved in the kingdom. This way, you are laying a foundation for financial rest. You're laying a foundation for financial peace. Now, it said here, Look at this scripture verse 34 said, Therefore take no thought for morrow, for morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficiency unto the day is evil thereof. He said, Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. There are people who worry about their future. What is my future going to be? What is my destiny going to be? What is going to happen to this marriage? You learn to trust God with your future. Learn to trust God with your future, learn to trust God with your expectation, and learn to trust God with your vision. You see, trusting God is the doorway to supernatural assistance. One of the ways we experience supernatural assistance is when we trust God. It's when we trust God, it's when we allow His Word to influence our way of doing things, when we allow His Word to influence uh, our way of thinking, our action, our behavior. That's how we prosper. That's how we succeed. That's how we win in life. When we allow His Word, because His Word is power. His Word is strength. It is in His Word that you gain the energy to rise above negative thoughts, to rise above anxiety, to rise above pressure, to rise above frustration. So if you begin to meditate on the Word of God, like God said to Joshua in Joshua 1 verse 8, He said, This book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate during day and night, and you will make your way prosperous. How am I going to make my way prosperous? I make my way prosperous by meditating on God's word and by doing the application of his word. This is how you make your way prosperous in Psalm 1. Psalm 1 verse 1, he said, Blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. He start telling us what happens if you don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. You'll be like a tree planted by the by the side of the river. Like, like let's go to Psalm one, sorry. Let's go to Psalm one. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now God wants you to prosper, but He wants you to prosper according to His will. He wants you to prosper according to His purpose. He wants you to prosper according to His plan. This is why you're not gonna give up. This is why you're not gonna quit. This is why you're going to stand on his word. You refuse to worry. It doesn't matter what is happening right now. In your finances, God is my source. You must declare this every day. God is my source. God is my helper. I trust God. I trust him. Today is a day of victory. You need to keep your confection right. It doesn't matter what the storms are, what the challenges are. You keep your confection right. God is my source. God is my helper. I look up to him. I trust him. This is what you should be saying. God will, God has made a way. God has opened a door. You begin to prophesy into your life. Instead of sitting down being depressed, instead of sitting down being worried, you begin to declare, my God will make a way for me today. He's opening doors for me. He's bringing me to increase. In Psalm 1, he said, verse 1, Psalm 1, verse 1, he said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scuffle. He said, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, 
and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. This is important. If you begin to get yourself involved into the word of God, great things happen. Great things happen. Mighty things happen. Big things happen. It is God's word that helps you rise above worry, rise above depression, rise above anxiety. So it doesn't matter what you're going through right now. If you can begin to lay aside your worry, you know the scripture said in Hebrew 12 verse 2, it says lay aside every weight. Part of that weight is worry. Is depression, is anxiety, is fear, is sin, you know, is distraction. Lay aside anything that have a potential to distract your faith work. Lay it aside. Get a point where you say to yourself, I quit from worrying. I quit from being depressed. I quit from this lifestyle. I'm going to trust God. Like the psalmist said in Psalm 23, verse 1, he said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This man knew that God can provide, God can supply. It doesn't matter what the need is, trust God for a miracle. Believe God for supernatural miracle. Believe God for supernatural open door. This is not a time for you to give up in your walk with God. This is a time to trust God. You don't have to worry about the future. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You don't have to worry about the future of your children because he has the back of your children. I'm here to say to you, worry does not solve problem. Worry only increase problem. Worry does not bring solution. Worry only take you far away from solution. So you don't have to worry. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will make a way for you. If you're watching this broadcast, I want you to trust Jesus. I want you to believe him. Everything is going to be all right. If you're watching and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart that God have raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. God bless you. You can watch me every day on finishworktv.com. You can get my book on Amazon, 40 Things You Need to Know About Your Future. And there is greatness in you. You can partner with this ministry by going to finishworktv.com and slash giving. And give as the Spirit of God will lead you. Thank you for being part of this broadcast. Until I come your way soon, don't forget this. There is greatness in you. There is greatness in you. And Jesus is coming soon.